You tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word And tell me the story most precious The sweetest that ever was heard Tell how the angels and chorus Sang as they welcomed his birth Glory to God in the highest Peace and good tidings on earth Tell of the cross where they nailed him Writhing in anguish and pain Tell of the grave where they laid him And tell how he liveth again Oh, love, in this story so tender Clearer than ever I see Stay, let me weep while you whisper Love paid the ransom for me Love paid the ransom for me In Luke chapter 1 verse 26 it says in the 6th month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're, you're beautiful with God's beauty. Beauty inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has su a surprise for you. You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and call his name Jesus. He will be great. Be called the son of the highest. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. And Mary said to the angel, But how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring forth will be holy, son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren. And here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you have said. Then the angel left her. You know, such faith from a young lady. You know, that was not a request from God to, hey, could you say something on my behalf? Could you go to the next town and, and do something? He was asking her to put your life on the line and have a baby before she got married. Not just any baby, though, but the Son of God, Jesus we, like Mary, have been given a measure of faith. The Bible says that if we have the faith of a mustard seed, we can move mountains. With this measure of faith, God gives us opportunities to water it and to grow our faith. I, I remember a lady one time, she was actually dying. And she grabbed a hold of me and she said, I wish I had your faith. I said, but you do. Because we're all given a measure of faith. And Mary had a measure of faith. But on that day, she was given opportunity to water that seed that God had put inside of her for her faith to grow. And just like all of us, God gives each one of us opportunities for that seed to be watered in our lives that our faith will grow. And I know that for, for myself, Delonda, I've just 
I've just been crazy enough to say, okay, God, and go with it and do what he's telling me to do. And so my faith just keeps growing and growing because that's all I want. It's a choice. I want to have big faith. I want to see God do big things. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see deaf ears healed. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see people get, get saved and filled with the Spirit of God. I'm not going to settle for what was. I want to see a move of God. Amen? Amen. And I have the faith to believe it's going to happen. Amen. So I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to say what he tells me to say. And I'm not going to hold back. Amen. I'm going to do it. But I challenge every one of us today because I believe that God challenges each one of us just as he did Mary that day. It's almost like he said, can I water that seed of faith in you today? And she said, just pour it out on me. And I think that's all that God's looking for. So before you respond to situations in your life, have a conversation with God and see how he's involved in it. Respond with faith and watch your faith grow. It will be amazing. One thirty-nine. it says, Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. 
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. You're so blessed among women, and the babe in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of the Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb with sheer joy. Blessed women who believed that what God said, believed every word would come true. And Mary said, I'm bursting with good news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows like wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggots. He knocked tyrants off their high horses and pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on his mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and then went back to her own home. The baby that Mary, I mean Elizabeth was carrying would soon be John the Baptist. And it leaped in his mother's womb. Even in the womb, the presence of God could be felt for that baby to be stirred when she met Mary, knowing that Jesus was in Mary's womb. And, and Mary says, God took a good look at me. And I just want to encourage you today. God is looking for you. You're not here by chance today, but God has been looking for you. He is looking for you. He is looking for people that will come and that will really worship him. He's looking for true worshipers. Those that have given their lives over to him so that we, like Mary, can be a part of the plan that God has for the world. God is looking for you right now.
chapter 2 verse 1 about that time Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire this was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for so Joseph went up from Galilee town to a town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah David's town for the census as David as a descendant of David he had to go there he went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. God orchestrated everything for his purpose. In 2 Corinthians 4.15, it says that all things are for our benefit. And if we would approach our lives this way, we would be seeing how God is in charge and we are not. Let God orchestrate your life today. Give him your will as Joseph did and see what God does in your life. You know, the Lord brought something to my attention and it's, you know, you wouldn't trust yourself to do open heart surgery on yourself because we don't have that knowledge. We don't know how to do that, but God does. And he sees everything and he knows everything. Who better to trust your heart with than him? He's had a plan from the moment you were born, before you were born. He knew you in the womb. And he knows everything that you have need of. You could trust him. It's not in our timing because he knows all and sees all. We don't have perfect timing because we want everything right now. And we're not ready to have everything right now. You know, that's the enemy behind our emotions, wanting stuff. But we've got to turn it to the Lord and give him our will and, and let him orchestrate our life. Let him decide when things are needed and when not. And that way we won't be making blunders with our life. That means I have to trust him. Amen. Sometimes trust is hard, you know, because stuff happens in this life that it makes it hard to trust people even you know and you know we, we talk about trusting God and that can be very challenging because of the stuff that people do to us and and so uh, you know I know that even in my own life when I was a when I was in high school I took a leadership test and I I scored in the 90s in every in all 16 categories yep. except one mm -hmm. trust and I probably was the opposite. Probably scored low in everything except trust. But I scored a 16 in trust. So I had to overcome a lot. When I, when I come to Jesus to trust him with my whole life, it meant, I, I mean, I had to just go all in with him. And, but once I experienced his love for me, 
is that perfect, unconditional love. And, and, I, I, and I knew that all my sins were forgiven. When, I did, when that happened in my life, I could trust him. I was like, wow, I trust him like no other now. It's like, oh my gosh, I trust him with everything. Well, do you remember back in the day when things would come against us and we would be at each other, attacking each other, yeah. frustrated and angry, and then and just the stress and the overwhelmingness of not knowing what to do and how to fix it and not having enough money. And every time, God would come through and he would fix it for us. And we were like, wow. And pretty soon after a gazillion times, unfortunately, it seemed like you and I became one, trusting God at the same time and not, not fighting against each other and just, hey, Lord, you know what we have needed? Because every time, even though we didn't have trust, he always came through. We always had a roof over our head. We always had food to eat. And, and it just seemed like he fixed everything. And it wasn't in our timing, but it was his. Well, you know, the word declares that no matter where we're at, God's always faithful. Yeah, I love that. And, and he so, is faithful, and I just, I love him so much. So much he showed his faithfulness to us over the years in so many ways that we would look back and go, why did we do that? Don't look back with regret. Trust him now. Make that de decision today that you're going to trust him with everything that you have, knowing that he knows everything you need. And when you trust in the Lord, It'll bring a joy to your heart like you've never known before.
my joy. Hallelujah. In Luke 2, 8, it says, there were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had seen set the night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody, a worldwide. A Savior has been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a manger at once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing praises to god glory to god in the heavenly heights peace to all men and women on earth who please him and the angel choir withdrew into heaven the sheep herders talked it over Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the shepherds had said about this child. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. And Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear deep within herself. The sheep herders returned and to let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they were. You know, the scripture says, seeing was believing. And when Jesus was resurrected from the dead and he went and he, he visited the disciples, he walked in through the, through the door and he stood in, with the disciples. Thomas wasn't there. And when Thomas came back, came in later, they said, oh, man, you missed it. Jesus was here. The resurrected Savior was here with us. And he's like, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. And Jesus, when he came, when Thomas was there, he said, go ahead, Thomas, put your, put your finger in my hand or put your hand in the hole in my side. And, and he looked at Thomas and he said, you know, Thomas, you believe because you see but there is going to be a whole bunch of people that haven't seen, but will believe. And that's us. Jesus has come into the world to be the light of the world. And before he left and ascended up into heaven, he declared that those who know him would be the light of the world. We are to be the light of the world. Amen. We're to shine. We're to let our light shine before all men. In being that light, we're not to hide our light. He compares with hiding your light under something, like putting a, you know, a, a, a bushel or a, a cover over that candle right there, putting it down. We're to let our light shine. The way that candle is right now, the way this light is shining on us, the way this tree and these reefs are. are lit. We, we as people are to let our light shine. We're to let the world know that we know Jesus. By just being loving, by being kind, by letting the love of God shine through us. Let it be known that his coming was not in vain. Let it be known that you're a child of the light. And there's nothing for you to cover up. As a prophetic sign today of being the light of the world, we're going to light candles. And hopefully you've all been given a candle or you got one when you came in. But before we do this today, I want to ask you this question. Do you know Jesus today? Has your light been shining to glorify God? Or have you just been floating through this life? You see, because one day Jesus is coming back. He came as a babe in a manger, as a, that little scene over there depicts. He came as a baby, and we've sang about it today, but he's coming back again. 
He's coming back, he says, he's coming back for his church, which is the bride of Christ, which is those that have relationship with him. Romans chapter 9, verse 10, he says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. That means if you can believe in your heart wholly that Je who Jesus is, that he came, that he died for us, that he was resurrected, that he's up in heaven today. If you believe that he died for your sins so that you can have life, and then he says, confess with your mouth. Speak it out. Tell somebody. Be the light of the world. Be that light that goes out and says, I love Jesus. I'm not afraid to do it in here. I'll do it on the corner. I don't care. I love Jesus. I'm not afraid to proclaim Jesus, amen, because I know what he's done. I know the forgiveness of all my junk. I know the healing of my mind, the healing of my emotions. I know what God has done for me. And I know my failings. I know where I've fallen. I know where I stumbled. I know when I do things wrong. You know, and I also know he's, he's always there to pick me up, to dust me off, to say, come on, Rock. Keep going. Keep going. You know, because none of us are perfect. And we all, you know, we all fall short. That's why we need Jesus. We need his loving kindness. You know, the word declares his tender mercies, that they're new every morning. So before we light our candles, because we're going to do it like this, I'm going to ask those deacons to come right now if you'd come. But before we light the candles, because what they're going to do is they're going to go down the aisles here in a minute, and they're going to light the end person's candle. I'm going to light their candle. They're going to light the end person's candle. And then what I want you to do, and this is the prophetic sign, that you're, you're sharing the light. You're passing the light along. And we're going to do this as a sign today that in our hearts we're making that decision. I'm going to share the light of God with people. I'm not going to hold back anymore. I'm going to let my light shine before men. But the thing is, is you've got to have the light to share it. Amen. See, I can, I can stand here all day and nothing's going to happen because I don't have it lit. So my question is to you today. Are you lit? Do you have relationship with Jesus today? And I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Why don't we just bow our heads and close our eyes for a minute? Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I, I, I haven't been lit, but I want to be. I want to have relationship with Jesus today. I want to give my life to him. I want to make that commitment today that I'm going to commit my life to Jesus and to letting my light shine. If that's you today, just raise your hand right now because I want to pray for you. You just raise your hand. Amen, little guy. Anybody else? Come on. You want to make that commitment to Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. I see it over there. Praise God. Why don't we say this prayer together? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus that he died for me, that he rose from the dead, and he's sitting at your right hand. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I give you my life today. Give me direction and let me be a light that I can shine to this world in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer today and you meant it, Jesus is in your heart. His spirit is living in you. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, there's a decision card in that seat in front of you. Before you leave here today, I would ask you to fill that out and uh, drop it in the offering boxes in the foyer. Or in the, when we pass the plates in a little bit, just putting in that offering plate. But to, right now, we're going we're gonna to light our candles. And if you want to stand with me, if you would, please. And they're going to come and they're going to pass the light.
Today we're passing the light. And we're going to sing. up here. That's why I had to take a picture. <laughs> Letting our light shine. Amen. And that's our commitment to the Lord today, to let our light shine before men. Amen. Why don't we blow this candle out and give the Lord a big hand today. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. All right. You may be seated. We still have the going to receive the offering right now and and the kids are going to come in a minute. They're going to minister to us in song. So. You know, the greatest gift that we've ever had is what we're here celebrating today, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave. Giving us a big part 
a big thing to God. And as we receive this offering today, I'm going to ask if the ushers would come forward right now. Ushers, come forward right now. Don't give the ushers your candles yet. <laughs> Did you get a plate, Edward? Okay. All right. Oh, there's Yolanda. Okay. <laughs> but giving to God is a big deal because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And I know that Delon and I have been giving to the Lord for many, many years, but there was times in my life when I really struggled with giving to God because I didn't know if there was going to be enough. But I learned that as I begin to give to the Lord, there's always enough. Because God will not leave his people, amen? So we're going to give today, and they're going to pass the plates. I'm going to pray, and when I'm done praying, they're going to start passing the plates, and the children are going to come, and... They're going to get ready to minister to us in song. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray today over this offering that we're about to receive. That, Father, that it be a blessing to you. And, Lord, I pray that in this season you bless the people of God. That, Lord, you, get, you bless them with more than they could even ask or imagine. Lord, that your hand be upon the people. Let us give with a, joy, a cheerful and a joyful heart, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
job. Take another bow. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Stay there. I'm okay. Well, I invite you just to not leave, but to fellowship with us. Like I said, Delonda made tons of cookies. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to blame it on her right now. Delonda made tons of cookies. <laughs> And uh, we have hot chocolate and coffee and water and tea. So, you know, take a few minutes. We finished early today, and uh, we didn't want to keep you real long. I know it's a busy season, but I'm just excited about Jesus. Is there anybody excited about Jesus today? Amen. So why don't you stand with me, and I'll pray, and then we can go and fellowship. Again, if you're here for the first time, go to the We Connect corner, and Don Maurice will meet with you for just a few minutes. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for this time, this day that we've had. Lord, we are so grateful that you sent Jesus to us. And Lord, we want to focus on you and, and make sure that Jesus is the reason for this season. Lord, we, we love you so much. And we thank you for forgiving us of our sins. And I pray for healing over every person here today. Because you came to heal all of our diseases. So I pray for the healing power of God to touch every person that's ailing right now, God, and that you just heal them right now. And Father, that you cover and protect every person as they go their way today. That your hand be upon us, Lord, and that your grace go with us. Lord, and as we go out into the world, let us be that light. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you next Sunday. Ching power up a pom pom, rumble pom pom, rumble pom pom. So to honor him, power rumble pom pom. When we
fall.